It may seem obvious at first, but it would be interesting to know if any train can run on any track. And for that, we'll ask an engineer. The running gear of a train must be compatible with the track network it will operate on. This means that the lateral spacing between the wheels must be compatible with the lateral distance between the rails of the track. The lateral distance between two rails is called the track gauge. Track gauges can vary from one region to another or from one country to another. Historically, many factors influence the choice for a track gauge. Industry, whether it's mining, agriculture, manufacturing of goods or tourism. Terrain and geography. Is the region mountainous or vast plains? Similar track gauge ensures trains can run throughout these networks. Over time, a standard track gauge of four feet, eight inches and a half or 1,435 millimeters emerged and became the reference. In general, a train is built to be compatible with a specific track network. Trains must account for the track network infrastructure. Is the train too heavy to run on the bridges of the network? Will the train fit inside of the tunnels or clear overpasses? Will the train leveling system adjust at the right station platform heights? Power collection is also important for compatibility. Does the train have a pantograph for overhead power collection? Does it have a current collector taking in power from a third rail? Train-to-track compatibility extends to control systems in operation. Is the onboard rail control and signaling system able to communicate with the wayside and signaling equipment of the track? Antennas, receivers, and other communication devices must be configured to be compatible. So, for a train to run on a track, both the train and the track must be compatible. Visit our channel for more answers and to submit your own questions. The most interesting ones will be showcased in future episodes. And you may be selected to be the one presenting your explanation when people ask an engineer.